Okay, today we're going to replace the battery on this little remote control helicopter. It's an S107. They're rather clever, real lightweight, real fun to work with, but what you're going to find out is that the batteries are kind of short-lived. I mean, they have come out with Batteries like this a little bit bigger, but they last about twice as long, and I'd recommend you put those in because, uh, well, they just don't last that long. Uh, so it's, it's a simple enough process. It takes basic skills. Here's a real fine screwdriver. I use this for working on cell phones. It's got two screws on the shroud on the front, motor cover, if you will. One here, one on the other side. That one's been removed. Now be kind of careful when you remove this to see it's got a little light inside of there, so you don't want to pull that out. Okay, here's the battery. It's got a little adhesive tape, kind of convenient. So instead of tearing it off and cutting that tape out, I'm going to heat the tape up, and you'll find that the adhesive will warm up enough that I can pop the battery out, and this will cool off, and we can reuse that same tape. I think it's a little bit more convenient to stay with, stay with the system that they've got in store instead of trying to add... Uh, additional tape or something. So I'm going to go ahead and get my little heater. We're going to heat that up. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and heat up this adhesive so we can pull the battery off and not damage uh, the little holder. This is just a standard hair dryer. Let's put a little bit of heat on it. We'll soften up the adhesive and we'll be able to reuse it again. It doesn't take very long. Let's put a little bit more heat on it, so make it convenient. Ah, there you go. It peels off nice and well. Let's put it someplace safe where it won't pick up any crud while we're working on it, because we want to reuse it. All right. So here's the battery. We can see that it's connected here, and we can see that it's connected there. We're going to disconnect both of these connections. And this is a little LED light that's in the front of the copter that kind of flashes uh, multicolors, kind of attractive. But anyway, we don't want to damage that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and let's get this battery removed, and then we're going to put this one right back in in the same spot, the new battery. All right, now here's a little bit of a magnification. I don't know how well this is going to come out, but you can see where it's connected. It's connected kind of on the circuit board, a little bit difficult access to get to right here. That's one, that's a positive, and here's the negative. And so let's see if we can get the solder iron in here, soften up that solder and pop it out. Maybe better just Okay, let's go ahead and unsolder this thing. I'm using this Heco, Heco, however you pronounce it, uh, tip. I got it set at 850, and we're just going to use this thing to melt the solder and then pull off the wires. So let's see how well this works. We're going to just heat up the general area, try to get it right on the existing solder really quick. Okay, let's get ready to solder this bad boy. I'm using this little Harbor Freight holder. There's a little connector on the same spot. We're going to melt a little bit of solder on the tip of our iron, just like that, so we don't have to have three hands. Now, it's not going to take very much, except a pair of delicate hands. I want to re soften the solder that I took this thing off on. And I'm just going to tab it. There, I can feel I've got it. Nope. Let's 
Okay, now we got a nice little bead at the tip of this bad boy. Now that should do it. There we go. Now we got a nice solid connection. We're also going to make sure that there's no contact between this casing, the metal, and the solder. But let's go ahead and get the other side done. Okay, let's go ahead and solder the black wire. I've got my iron. I'm going to melt a little bit of the solder on the tip of it. Okay, now you've got to be a little bit careful. This yellow wire is, is uh, very close to where I've got to make this connection. So I don't want to burn off the insulation and then create a short. Okay, everything's soldered in there, and I just put it on the charger for a couple seconds. And as you can see, we've got power, and so I think with confidence we can go ahead and charge it up, put it, put it all back together, charge it up, and get this bad boy back into operation. So again, you could do it easier. You could leave the wire connected underneath there where it was, cut the wire, and then splice it further out. Uh, I try to do a little bit nicer job. I think any added weight to this equipment makes its flying probably uh, difficult. I think that everything has been pretty much calibrated for a certain weight, so every little gram that you add to it is probably going to uh, eat up power quicker and maybe make the equipment fly uh, uh, harsher. But, but at any rate, I think, that's, uh, I think we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and put it back together and charge it up. Okay, there it is. I've reused that same foam adhesive tape here. And I'm going to kind of keep everything clean and stick these wires onto it. Uh, uh, why not? It's there. It'll keep it cleaner. Same with on this side. And so when I put that shroud, the hood, the nose bonnet, if you will, back on, I want to make sure that this light uh, is going to be in the middle of it. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing back together. I don't know if you can see in here, uh, but in here there's a little weight with some adhesive. I think that's to help the nose and stabilize it, but there's also a hole. Now that hole is for this light and that tape is double-sided tape and it's to hold this light in place. So I'm going to kind of jam it in front of that hole. Yeah, push it in there. place that tape over top of it. My setup. This is my little soldering set. It's got adjustable temperatures here. You can go up, you can go down. I set it for 700, 750, and, and start there and see how that works. Uh, this is the soldering iron and this is the tip. It's a, it's a fairly fine tip and that's what you want. Normally you would have water in here and you could clean the sponge, but in the back back here you see the uh, steel wool and that helps to keep that tip clean from getting oxidized on. There's a little cheap little Harbor Freight. Use it to hold items together. Uh, this is the solder. This is a flux core solder, meaning that it's, it's a thin wire, very thin, uh, soft melting point, low melting point if you will and it's got flux inside the core of it so that helps to clean it without having to solder it and this is a little bit thicker gauge uh, solder for bigger joints but uh, for this type of work we don't need it and here's the 